What up? This is Robert Ory. Ory, three pointer. Buries it. You might know me as Big Shot Bob. To Ory for three. Oh, unbelievable! This guy is off the charts. What's going on, Big Shot Bob? Robert Ory from downtown. Aha! Welcome into the Big Shot Bob podcast. Do this show every week with a bunch of us goons and uh, some special <laughs> guests that'll jump in here and there. Uh, I'm Rob Jenners. That's B Dog Brandon Harper, uh, of course. Main attraction, seven time NBA champion, uh, Robert Ori. How are you, sir? What's going on? Man, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Uh-oh. Uh oh. We were up for Emmy la- uh, the, the other night, Saturday night, and we didn't win. So you were At nominated, Spectrum. Spectrum was nominated for an yeah. Emmy. Yeah, the LA, you know, we have the LA local yeah, Emmys. That's where I so, won uh, that's where I won Miami. Yeah, and for so the LA for Spectrum. It, yeah. It was us versus the Dodgers versus the Clippers. Of course, nah, you know the Clippers didn't have a chance of winning. So we lost. <laughs> wow. Man, <laughs> somewhere lost Jamie Dodgers. Maggio and Allie Clifton are like, yo. <laughs> we lost to the Dodgers, which are right across the hall from us. So <laughs> same building, but we lost to the Dodgers, you know. Well, that's what I think they had a lot to do with that's what you got happens when you got all them teams over there. I, but I think it had a lot to do with you know Scully and you know the yeah. you know the great Scully. And, well, Vin Scully, uh, yeah, yeah, iconic. Is this was this? Mm-hmm. I would imagine this was his last season that he was yes. nominated for. Yeah, I mean that's come yes. on, that's sort of so, a lifetime yeah. achievement Emmy. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. no matter how the broadcast was, it was Vin's final year, so <laughs> yeah, we kind of have to give them an Emmy for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and then uh, you know I, I was I was excited because they asked me to present Stu with an award. So I was on stage and I got to read a prompter. I was like, "Hey, uh, I felt special." <laughs> you? They gave you a prompter? Oh my! Yes, God. the trust they have instilled in you is something you don't get exactly. on this show. <laughs> we don't. You got a prompter on this one, man. Uh, hey, I started to, and I stayed. On, I stayed on script for a little bit. You know, I I, I got off script. You know, just to pub myself. Sure, of course. <laughs> but, yeah. You promoted the podcast, obviously. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely yeah. did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, we had a big week last week. So if you're new to the show, welcome, uh, Scoop Jackson. Going to join us here in a few minutes. We'll have Scoop for the show uh, today. I love Scoop. Uh, what a, what a good dude, man! What a cool guy. Yeah. If you, if you pay attention to ESPN, he's all over freaking ESPN. Chicago's own, yeah, Chicago's own. Scoop Jackson. So Scoop's gonna gonna join us here in a minute. We got a ton to do. Uh, we round out every show with a game. If you are new to this show, so stick around for the end of the show. Uh, if you've never heard it before, we're gonna do a game today called Walmart or Waffle House. Are, are we playing our, that game? Are we playing that game with Scoop? I'm gonna ask Scoop if he wants to stay for Walmart or Waffle House. <laughs> now I don't know, you know, being a Chicago guy. There's a Walmart, dude. Uh, yes, but I don't. I'm like, I don't know how much. Oh, here he comes now. Let's find out. Let's find out how much <laughs> Scoop really knows we'll about uh, about Walmart or Waffle House. But we will ask him to stick around uh, for that game as well. But there is a ton of stuff to get to this week. Hot dog! My goodness, we got a ton of stuff. Scoop, <laughs> fellas, 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 what's happening? There what's he going is. on? What's up? What's going on? What's Big up, shot. brother? What's happening, Scoop? <laughs> What's up, baby? <laughs> I, I, I always feel like me and Scoop started this at the same time. <laughs> started you, you, in the NBA at the same time. You know what? Time. You're pretty accurate, man. Yeah. You you, pretty, you, might... you, are, you are really pretty accurate. We can go through that. You're pretty accurate, though. Yeah. When did you when did you, you first come into the scene in the NBA? Like what? I came on to the scene um, the summer before you all went to the finals. With the Your Knicks? rookie year. Okay, no, my sophomore year. Yeah, we did yep. Knicks. Yeah. Yep, yeah. We did um uh Slam had been out for about a year and um they lost their staff to Vibe magazine. Vibe magazine took four four people from Slam after their second issue, and then the publisher hired Tony and then they hired me. And uh the first story I did was interview with Shaq when he was on Dream Team 2 that summer. When he should have been on Dream Team 1? When he was on Dream Team 2. And we did the, I did the cover story on him. There's a whole story behind that I won't even get into. But um, it was during the finals that you all played them. Mm-hmm. was the first time I had seen Shaq since that issue dropped. And he saw me on the court before the game and ran across the court and gave me a hug and apologized for the shit that he put me through to even get the interview. 
Bless you, Keel. Really nobody knew who Slam was. Slam, nobody really knew. And he's like, because he he sent me through some, man, he man, he sent me through some shit. <laughs> he put you through the ringer. Oh, he put yeah. me through a whole, man, oh, he put yeah. me through a ringer. Mm -hmm. Just to get a question and answer with him, man, it was, it was, mm -hmm. it was whatever. But uh, See what happens when you go pro? That was, yeah, <laughs> that was my first time seeing him. And by that time, we were on issue like five. Mm -hmm. And that's when I first met you, Sam. Yeah. Cream. Yeah. yeah, that because that, that was our that was our first time ever covering the final. So yeah, we came along at the exact same time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And Scoop, you're a Knicks fan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the, I came oh, up man. a Knicks fan. I'm I you know, I am I'm, I'm not a Dolan guy <laughs> at all. <laughs> I don't think any Knicks fan is a Dolan guy though. Man, look, <laughs> I know? don't look. I I don't look. <laughs> 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 Hey, Scoop, it's going to be, it's, it's gonna be like the color Donald purple. Trump said, <laughs> Trump said that he can walk down the streets of New York and shoot somebody and won't anything happen to him? Oh, yeah. That person he needs to shoot is James Dolan. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> nothing would happen to him in New York if he did that. No, hey, man. Scoop, them Knicks ain't winning a thing until James Dolan get up out of there. Until, you, until they do right. And right. It ain't happening. It ain't happening at all. Mm -hmm. It ain't happening at all. So yeah, I um, yeah, I grew up a Knicks fan, man. Even though I was in Chicago, I grew up a Knicks fan, man. Wal Frazier, Earl Monroe, <sighs> Dick Barnett, you know, Red Holtzman coaching that squad. Yeah, you know that was that was it. That that's the team I grew up with because um, Wal Frazier's son, Wal Junior, uh, he's a few years younger than me. He happened to go to the same uh school that I was in in grammar school in Chicago. Right. Um, and my father. Uh, who was a writer as well, he was close with Earl Monroe. So when I was in fourth grade, my father took us to New York, took me and my brother and my mom at the time to New York, uh, took us to Master Square Garden to see a Knicks game. And uh, he got us, you know, he had his credentials. So he took me into the locker room and I met Earl Monroe. And I had met Walt Frazier because he was little Walt's son, so he'd come to Chicago and see him every now and then. But that you know, being in the locker room and you know, seeing Walt Frazier outside of being somebody's father, seeing him as the Walt Frazier, mm -hmm. and then meeting Black Jesus, man, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I man, Earl, Earl Monroe was that dude, that was it, man. I was like, I'm I'm a Nick fan for life now. I feel that man, it's, it's just weird how I don't think people understand when kids get a chance to go into a professional locker room and see people outside of uniform, just you know, being regular people. It's yeah. an eye opener. I, I remember when I, you know, my my middle son's a big football player, and I took him into the coach locker room because this is when I, you know, knew Peyton Manning pretty well. We go in, and my son was just like this, like in awe, like he didn't know what to say. And you know, Peyton came up, was talking to him, was really nice. So it, it, it's a great feeling if you have the opportunity to take a kid, a young kid, a young impressionable kid, into a locker room because it can set them down a path that you don't know, you know, the future might hold yeah. for them. So. Yeah, so it was, yeah. It's, it's a great feeling. Yeah, it, it, it can be life changing, and life altering. It's a see, it's a unique experience, and like you said, I think it uh, it, it breaks down a wall of seeing these cats in other dimensions, either through screen or through television or here. You know, you you break that wall down, and you still idolize them, but it, it, there's a human connection that you know Correct. is it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it, it's different. So yeah, you're right. But uh, Rob, tell the truth, man. You've seen it happen to adults, not just kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's, it's weird because it can it'd be on the flip side of that because you can meet some. I remember the first time we were in the Lakers when I met someone, I met Nicole Kidman, and and I was like, she was introducing her kids to us and she was all smiling. I'm like, you know who you are? Right. You know? And it's just like, and I'm like, you and like, and it's, and it's, it's just weird. And you, you run across people like this. I, I think the, I was just talking about this with my wife. I, I, it was, it was, um, they had a big, some country singer was stopped the concert and got onto someone about not by taking a, a, a selfie. So that happened to me. It was right. at a Patti LaBelle concert where I didn't want to stand up. I was clapping and, you know, singing along, but I didn't stand up and she stopped the show and pointed me out like, Robert, and she called my name like, she know my name. Wow. Like, oh, man. I, I, and she's like, I know you tall, but you better stand up and, and, and dance. I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to block the people behind me. So I don't care about them. I want you to stand up. Wow. But, but the funny thing is, <laughs> yeah. I, Rob, we've told you this many times. Because you were a Laker, 
a lot of people that you look look up to, they're fans of yours, and you don't even yeah. know it because you're a Laker, and they're yeah. eager to meet you. Yeah, but that and that opened up. She says, "You better come backstage. We're gonna talk about this." So she invited me backstage, and we just talked, and it was it was like wow. I'm like I'm eating. I'm meeting Patty Labelle, and you know I'm sitting in like wow. She called me back. No, pointed me out, and it's it's you know like I said, it goes both. That's love though. That's love. love. That's love. Yeah. But here, I was actually talking about just regular, like your boys. Like, <laughs> I've had boys, like grown, like grown, doing business stuff. Like, all right, you know, I got to work tonight. You want to roll to the game with me? So I'll get a credential, get a credential for them, right? Yeah. And they just rolling as whatever, just roll with me, man. And they have never had that locker room experience, you know, and I'm working, but they just along for the ride. <laughs> Look. I've had so many of my boys in like in our thirties be like, man, I ain't never going to another basketball game on a regular ticket ever again in my life. <laughs> look, they Spoiled want them. that experience. Oh, it changes it. Like, man, yep. look, I don't care about none of this stuff. I want every time I go to a game now, I'm rolling with you or this, that, and the other. And it becomes the same type of life life change experience for them as it does as as a kid. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I remember it. one time I took. I was doing a story on Scotty Pippen, right? And uh -huh. I took my guy brother Raul with me to Scotty's house to do the interview. This fool got <laughs> so comfortable. <laughs> he literally got into an argument. I mean, a flat out argument with Scotty Pippen about Pearl Washington. Like, I'm like, wait a minute, man. You can't be telling this man who's played against this dude. Nah, man, this he, Scotty, you don't know what the hell you talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was like he would be such a like, man, that's Scotty Pippen, that's Scotty Pippen. But grown ups go through the same thing when they get that experience, that locker room experience, or going to somebody's crib, that intimate experience where that wall gets broken down. I've seen grown folks like revert back to that 10, 9 year old kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I told Rob, my, in my adolescence, I was a Knicks fan, <laughs> or no, not Knicks fan, but a Nets fan because I grew up in New Jersey. But when right. I was at, a, I was like 10, 11 years old. And I'm at, a, I'm at a sports bar with my old man because that's what my dad did. He would drag us to a sports bar. We'd watch sports. And he goes, you know who's sitting at the, at the bar? I go, no, who is that? He goes, Daryl Dawkins. And I was like, I don't know who I'm 10 years old. I don't know who Daryl Dawkins is. <laughs> and it's the first time I ever met a professional athlete. But Daryl Dawkins stood up. And, I mean, I, at 10, yeah. that man yeah. was, was a giant. Yeah. I mean, he, he yeah. came up. My dad shook my dad's hand, shook my hand, swallowed my arm with his hand. And yeah. I was like, man, I just – from then on out, it was like, let's go, Nets, Daryl Dog. Just because I got to meet the guy one time, but I mean, never in my life have I been more taken aback by the size of a human being. Oh, yeah. Than by hey, Daryl Dawkins. Who was the one who got, like, Daryl Dawkins got you? Who was the one who got you all? Like, it's a good one. Like, who, who from, a, from, from a basketball perspective, who froze you all? Like, oh, my oh. goodness. Uh, I, I know exactly for me. I remember um, I was being recruited by Alabama. And the Sixers were playing uh, Milwaukee, I think. And Doc, they had a little get together for all the top peoples, and, and they, of course, Alabama was trying to impress me. They had Daryl, I mean uh, Terry Cummins, and Dr. J to speak. Oh. And Dr. J was on a whole nother level. I'm sitting yep. there as, as a sophomore. I'm like, I'm looking at my mom, like, what the fuck is he saying? My mom, like, I don't know. <laughs> but then, when then Terry Cummins was started talking, I was like. Oh shit! You know he broke it down because he saw was a bunch of kids in there, so he he just broke it down in layman's terms and started talking. I'm like, okay. And then after the you know I went to go shake his hand and say nice to me, even though I was a huge Dr. J fan. Yeah, I didn't understand what Dr. J was saying. Right. I understood what TC was saying, so I went up to TC and I was like, dude, I loved you at DePaul and da 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 da. Right, He's like, right, right. I hope to see you on this on on the court one day, young fella. I'm like, okay. And I think for me it was just meeting Terry Cummins and him just being. Like breaking it down so I can understand what he was saying. And yeah. that right. age, you know what I mean? So that's dope. I don't think uh, out of all the athletes and the basketball players that I met, none of them I've never froze up in in front of any of them. But the one I probably would have uh, is the one I never met, and that was Kobe. I, I think yeah. if I would have ever got a chance to meet Kobe, I don't know if I would have ever had the words to to speak to him. I'd probably just shook his hand and. Hey, bro, nice to meet you. Probably just walk the other way <laughs> and be like, I never had an opportunity yeah. again. You know, I met so many, but Kobe was my he's my favorite player of all time. Still is to this right. day. And to to wishing that I had the ability to meet him would have been really, really dope. Yeah.
I got Rob. It's funny you mentioned Dr. J, man. Uh, Julius was always like you said he was it for yeah. us. I'm, I'm a little bit older than you, but Doc was like it for us. And I remember years ago, man. I uh, got I met Doc in London. When you over there? When you over with uh, when you all went to London? Okay. But after y'all won the champ, yeah. After '95, yeah. Right, right. So I was in London with you all, and Julius was there. And I met Doc there. And upon doing a story, finally doing a story on him in Slam Magazine, I got an autographed basketball. Because after we did the interview, he actually called my wife and was like, look, I want Scoop to come to the game with me tonight. You know, can he come? You'll miss his plane. You know, we'll get him on the plane tomorrow. And she's like, ah, right, you know, you know, she was tripping. because She's a huge Doc fan. So say, hey, if you're hanging with Doc for the night, that's cool. I'm like, yeah, this is this, this is lovely, right? <laughs> so I got an autographed basketball, right? And I came back to the crib with the autograph basketball. And my wife is Trace, like, oh, that's dope. Doc signed the ball. He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, I got to get something for it. I said, I got to shrine this. She's like, all right, Doc is great, but it's just an autograph. I said, Tracy, you know, I know you love Doc and all. I said, but you don't know, this is Doc. And so she was like, whatever, right? I called my boys that evening. I said, y'all, look, I got an autograph basketball with Doc. I had 15 motherfuckers showing up at my crib just to see the autographed basketball. Just to see it. Just to, just see, to see it. it. Yeah. And my wife, and look, we are, we are in our, we're 30 years old. My <laughs> wife was like, this is unbelievable. I said, don't understand. This is, y'all, younger dudes, they got Jordan, but this is Doc. Yeah. You know yeah. This, We never had Doc in our house besides, you know, our Converse <laughs> All-Stars, you know, all of it. This is it. Yeah. You know, this dude's coming by rubbing it like they were at the Apollo Theater, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, dude, Doc is, he's royalty. Yeah. Like, there's some guys exactly. in the NBA that are royalty. They just, they transcend everything. And Doc was always one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and here's the funny thing. When my wife finally met Doc in person, she froze up like you would when you met Kobe, right? <laughs> just. And after, 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 you know, we talked for a minute and he walked away and said the other she looked at me and said, "You know what? I get it now. Yeah. I get why I get it." She said, "I said I told you. <laughs> I got it." Uh, all right. Well, listen. Scoop's going to hang out with us for uh, for our show this week. As much of it as, as you want to stay for, you're welcome to stay as long as you want. Hang out. We got just tons of stuff going on this week. I wanted to hit on, and definitely Scoop okay. would would love to get your take on some of this stuff. Um, the, I really want to get his take on this one, the first go, one. Go, yeah. the Jalen Brown extension. Uh, no, got... not the Jalen Brown extensions. I want to go. With, I want to go deep into the Paul Pierce. Oh, you want to go Paul Pierce? I want to okay. go Paul Pierce we'll go first. Paul Pierce. All right. Uh, okay. um, All right. All right. Paul, Paul Pierce this week um, out. I think this was from Summer League, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. This is Paul Pierce uh, saying. But he after, keeps doing this. This was after the, the the Hall of Fame announcement last week with Dwayne Wade going into the Hall of Fame. This is Paul Pierce. Put Shaq on my team. Put LeBron and Bosh with me. I'm not going to win one. You don't think? Oh, 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 yeah. You put put me, LeBron, and Bosch. Me, LeBron, and and Bosch. We can't get, we're not going to win one. Yeah. We're not going to win a couple. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm saying, though. That's true. That's true. I'm saying, though, like, like, who's the better three point shooter? Yeah. 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 Is he, is he a better scorer? Is he a better scorer? Okay, he averaged more points than me career. I can shoot the three. He's a the better slasher. I can post up. I can get to the line. Who a better score? So this is Paul Pierce basically saying better than LeBron. Or, yeah, he uh, was sorry, on, better uh, than Dwayne Wade. He was sorry. on Cam and Mace's show, I believe. That's what that was. Yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. So didn't he have, if didn't he want, have a big three plus him, gave him a big four? Think about it. You had Rondo. Yeah. You had Garnett. Garnett. Him. And, and uh, Ray Allen. And Ray Allen. That's big four right there, technically. Well, Rondo wasn't. We didn't know about Rondo at the time. So, right. I mean, you, you did. Rondo, Rondo, Rondo was in his early stages, like you were saying, when y'all came to Houston, the first championship. Y'all, he mm-hmm. was young. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because, you know, yeah. I, I, look. I can see where he's trying to go with that. And, I, 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 I do, too. I think yeah. the only thing wrong is that he's saying it into a microphone. That's, <laughs> that's usually what happens when it goes south. Yeah, you're right. No, you're seriously, right. If, look, if, we, if we're just hanging out, if we had a, you know, if we kicking it in a you know, hotel room, we're kicking at a bar, just chilling or something, like we're sitting on the sideline watching a game and having this conversation, it's all good. It's yeah, all yeah. good, but the fact yeah. that you're saying it in a microphone, 
I, I wonder what I wonder why he keeps you know but, focuses on Dwayne Wade. Like, why you think you better than Dwayne Wade? You know, they're, they're both great players. You know, just say you know what. Hey, we both had great careers. You know, one had more points. You know, we both could have won championships. But don't just say you're better than another guy. Rob, you know? Rob, Rob, you you know you know truth, just like I know truth. <laughs> Paul is being who he is because, and the reason he's on the way way because he finally had to jump off LeBron. He was on LeBron <laughs> for years. Yeah, he was. So he just had to find somebody else, and now he found LeBron adjacent. That's really all it is. Yeah. He found someone that's connected to LeBron, but it's still about LeBron. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah. still that 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 itch about LeBron's career and his career that he's going to always have problems with. <laughs> and this time, like I said, it's just not LeBron. It's LeBron and Jason. So who did LeBron win, chip, win chips with? I'm going to go to the next guy. You know, I'm going to go to the next guy. And, and after that, it's going to be Carmelo Anthony because he's LeBron's <laughs> boy. I mean, he's going to keep going down the line. But that's who that's who truth is. And everybody got nemesis like that. That's cool. You know, you've been in the game a long time, you know. But the problem with Paul is that he keeps doing it when a microphone and a camera's around. <laughs> And instead of being like, I, right, that's P being P, it's us looking at it as like, dude, it's becoming problematic. And it's almost like you're obsessed with this. Yeah. And you, when you listen to him, you when I listen to him sometimes, it's almost like, like, bro, you all almost talk like you ain't won a title. And it's like, you, it's like you're hearing a guy who's had a great career, or like if this was Melo talking. And him and LeBron weren't as cool, and they didn't have a banana boat right. crew. It's almost like hearing Melo talking, a guy who's had a Hall of Fame career but hasn't won a title. Bro, you've been to title games and, and, and title games before in finals and won one. Can we get beyond that and just speak to not even the Hall of Fame piece, not even speak to the to to, to the winning the ring? I'm getting more specific than that. Dude, you got a 75 jacket. Yeah. Can we stop? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the, it doesn't make once you in that seventy five group, yeah, you good, right? You 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 are you are on there. You should shut it down. Like, look, man, I have been solidified as one of the seventy five baddest motherfuckers to ever play this game. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. The yeah. complaints to me should stop once the NBA does it. When they did it in fifty, when they did it in seventy five, you know what I'm saying? Once you get that honor, you you should be like, I'm good. I don't, I don't need this. It doesn't make a difference. Yeah. It's all about that one group. Who's in this group? Right. We Dwayne's in this group. I'm in this group. The bronze hey, I'm cool. But Scoop, you, you, stop you, right there. You know, you're right. You're a thousand percent right. But you know how that human mind works, especially when the ego involved. You start I know, tearing but, them it, things. I know, but to me, man, it's like it, it's it's almost like you get forgetful of why you even got into the game in the first place. Like, everybody wants to be the best ever. And, you know, there's going to be a few that's going to fall short. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the end of the day, and, and as a retired player, Rob, you can, you, 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 can, you can piggyback on this or disagree, is that when you step back and look at your career, and, yes, you do want to win rings. You know, you probably want to ring an MVP, this, that, and the other. You know, you probably want to make the Hall of Fame. That's fine. But when you are selected, in a group of set, like the other 6,000 people that's ever played the game, and the league itself, you know, gives you that, you know, Game of Thrones swords, you know, honors mm -hmm. you up over your shoulders as one of the 75 best to ever do it. You at, at some point, why are you starting to nitpick about certain player? Man, you in the room. You are really, really in the room. Yeah. You know, and I get wanting to have conversations amongst your boys or amongst other people. But to me, it's the public nature of the conversation that you continue to have that becomes problematic. Mm. Like, dude, be happy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Really be happy for yourself and what you achieve, but also show some humility and be happy for everybody else that's in the same room that you are. Because you all are a special, special, special group. Yeah. Elite group. Very Elite so. man, you you in the <laughs> conversation with group. Elgin Baylor. Yeah. You in the conversation with Cap. Yep. You in the conversation with, you know, Will. You in the conversation with Bob Cousy and Bill Russell. You in the conversation with Julius Irving, who we just talked about up here. Yeah. Yeah. Why is Cap? You in the same room with Mike. Now Mike's gonna talk <laughs> shit about him being great at everybody while he's in that room. That's Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all know that. Yeah. But 
Yo, y'all, you got to let Mike be Mike until you win an argument. That's just Mike being Mike. But everybody else in that room, as far as they're concerned, hey, man, we all equal. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's Everybody's like, all equal. Here's and the, me, as a former player who's in that, but not a former player, if I'm a former player, I would love to see somebody like Paul Pierce really just accept that publicly. Like, you know, I ain't going to look. Y'all, it's y'all's job, Scoop. And you're in the media. That's your job to go argue about like this, that, and the other. Right now, I'm I'm on the 75, and nobody can argue that. Mm-hmm. And he could actually take it a step further. He said, the only reason I wasn't in the 50 that I wasn't born at that time. I'm going to tell you right now, I've probably been on that 50. You can't argue that because they're doing it just by the, by the years. NBA was 50 years old, they picked 50, 75 either. So he can argue that if I was born earlier, I'd have been one of the 50 greatest able. No argument. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now you're getting into the weeds of an argument that I think you should be above. If you know, if, if in my mind, Paul Pierce should be above having public conversations like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and like for me, it's like he's complaining in this about like the circumstances, the team around him, the guys he got to play with. And it's like, that's not a reflection on your game, Paul. Like, we know how good you are. You don't have to right. give say, well, Dwayne was only maybe better than me because he got to play with Shaq and LeBron and Chris Bosh. It's like, wait, wait, wait. come on, let, now what game honest. are you playing? Like, Let's be honest here. Dwayne, Dwayne got, what, three rings, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, he did win two with their big three. Mm-hmm. Yep. Correct? Right. The same way Paul got his one with his big three. If we really, really being honest, Dwayne got that other ring with half a shot. Oh, very much so. Right, hundred percent. I was in Miami that year for that run. Like, look, we 100%. know that's a half. That's a half a shot he was playing with, and half a shot is amazing. But that's still half a shot. So, if you're going to go for that, if Paul Pierce's argument, where's your ring with Antoine Walker? Good point. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Where's yeah. your ring with a half a shot? Because. If we're going to compare who's greater, you know, neither one of us won an MVP. But at least if I'm Dwayne Wade, and this is something Paul Pierce should take into consideration, to really win that argument, you need to win that ring with a half a shack, and you need to honor the fact that he won that ring with half a shack. You can't say that he won a ring with Shaq, because we all know that's not the rings that Kobe won with Shaq. That's not the rings with the squad Rob played on. You know what I'm saying? He won that ring with half of Shaquille O'Neal. Mm-hmm. Half of them. Yeah. So, yeah. to me, if we're having a real conversation and if, and, and if truth was on here, that would have to be that would have to be put on the table. Really have to be put on the table. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And he was yeah. finals MVP that year, too, by the way. Dwayne Wade. So, oh, it's like, look, I mean, he just look. he took that series over. We talk right. We talk about what we see play. We talk about what Jimmy Butler did. Oh yeah, you know, in the first round. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Dwayne Wade games three, four, five, and six. Game Dallas. three is the one that really stands out to me too, because game three was the one where he was like, "Nope, this is mine now." Well, I'm, I'm yeah, I got, little, I, I, I got a little. I got a little intel for you all. Games one and two, Dwayne Wade was sick. He had the flu. Temperature was floating around. I think game one was 103. Game two was around 101. Never said anything about it. Jason Terry and Dirk a little bit. They were talking shit on the podium after the game two win. And I'll never forget this. I'm sitting there watching. Dwayne Wade is actually watching it like right outside, just sitting outside watching to see what they got to say. Walk out of the media room. D puts his arm around my neck and said, them motherfuckers don't know I'm better now. I'm good. <laughs> mm. He literally says this to me after game two. Oh. He said he, he said those exact words. Them motherfuckers don't know I'm good now. I've been sick the last four days. Two games I've been sick. I'm good now. Watch, yeah. w- watch you know what the fuck's about to happen. You know what's and, amazing to me? 
But how, how how often guys get sick before the finals, man? I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck are y'all doing? Why are you out and partying? Why you? This is the time you taking vitamin C. You not going no damn where. You supposed to be masked up before mask was even a thing. <laughs> it's like I can't understand it. It's like I'm like when I was playing in the playoffs, I shut everything down. I ain't go no damn where practice at home because I didn't want to get sick. Even yeah. when my kids would come, I'm like, go get your asses in the shower. Clean up <laughs> right now because I ain't getting sick. And I don't understand how these guys are like, oh, I was, I'm like, is this all a thing? It's like copying MJ now saying I was sick. I know Dwayne Wade didn't mention it, but how do you get sick in the most important time of your life? You shouldn't be around nobody that's nasty. <laughs> 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 you hit those kids with the decontaminant when they come yeah, exactly. through. Like, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Ass in the yeah. shower. Take but those clothes. Thing. Off, leave me in the laundry room. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think, and to answer your question, Rob, I think, mm. man, that it's always that final experience the first time where you're just like, oh, I'm here. And as much as you want to win, you don't want to miss anything either. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think they want, especially if you're in Dwayne Wade's case, where you are the center of that organization and that team getting there. And you're like, hey, I'm, you know, I want to enjoy every moment and everything that happens during these finals. So I'm not saying you're going out kicking and doing anything that you want to do, but I think you're not going to seclude yourself and miss those moments. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're doing things and you're interacting. I, I think I'm not saying that's right. I'm thinking that's what winds up happening is that they want to embrace the entire moment of it all. And, right. and you leave yourself open to whatever. But I guess Dwayne didn't learn from his own his own doing how he wouldn't talk shit about Dirk. <laughs> he right, didn't right. learn. <laughs> and then Dirk said, oh, you going to talk shit about me? <laughs> so, right, 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 right. I guess what's good for the goose is good, good for the game. Yep. Yeah. It goes both ways. But I do give my man credit. And to me, I'll go back to that series is that, you know, you hear people talk all the time about what they're going to do. Right. And... To hear Dwayne Wade say that, watch what I'm about to do, like seriously, and then to watch those next four games, yeah, it, it really makes you like, oh, this dude really, you know, he really is that good. He's he really has the capability yeah. of doing it. And I'm not saying Paul didn't, uh, doesn't have a, didn't have the capabilities of doing it, but I can't go back in his career and find a moment that equals that. So if we're having this argument. At some point, Paul, you got to show us this. Yeah. Because you don't have this in your resume. Yeah. And that may tip the scales. You know, if you and Dwayne Wade get into the room and you all, the two, are having this conversation, tell me what are you going to do to counter that when he says that. And it's kind of like the LeBron uh, uh, MJ debate. You know, at the end of the day, that debate can only be settled by two people, and that's them two. Put them in a the room and see who comes out. <laughs> and, and seriously, you all know as well, everybody on this podcast knows as well as I do. There's no way Michael's going to let LeBron walk out there not believing. <laughs> no chance. No right, chance. There's no chance. No chance. No chance. No, never happened. Uh, all right, well let's 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 get on to the Jalen Brown extension cuz that broke this morning. One Celtic to another. Holy cow. Yep. Dude, I mean, uh, what is this? This is a three hundred and four million dollar million dollar deal over five, five years. years. Supermax extension. The contract is fully guaranteed. Um, Harper, do you have the numbers you were giving me earlier? Because they made yeah, my yeah, head yeah. spin. <clears throat> Here's the, the breakdown. It starts twenty four, twenty five, fifty two point three million, twenty five, twenty six, fifty six point five, twenty six, twenty seven, sixty point seven million, twenty seven, twenty eight. 65 million and 28 and 29 season. This man is going to make just a tick under 70 million dollars that season. Damn. Damn. Is Jalen Brown worth that kind of money? It ain't about him being worth it. It ain't about right. It, it, it ain't about the worth. And it ain't about the worth to us. It's about the worth right now to that organization what they that, that's that's what it boils down to. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and guess Wait, what, Scoop? Just, next offseason, uh, his, his running Tatum. mate, Jason Tatum, he's going to be the yeah, highest player. Oh, yeah, player. oh, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's going to be another problem. <laughs> yeah. but hey, but they're killing themselves. This is what they don't understand. It's like now you sign these two dudes, you better make damn sure you get something in the draft 
or these people who going to come play for the Celtics grew up being Celtic fans, yeah, or they got right. good friends because they ain't going to sign nobody else. That's it. Let's, let's, let's look what, even a little a little bit with, with uh, Damian Lillard that's going on in, in Portland. Like now you sign those two dudes, think about it, that's going to be a billion dollars between two dudes. You yeah. ain't going to get nobody else on that team. It's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here's the thing also that, that Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for, uh, you know, you know, Jalen, but mm-hmm. my concern is they have to win at least a couple of championships. Now, I think at this price tag, one is not good enough, and only because they've been so close over the last, like, five years. They've been knocking on their door. So, you know, they – they one is – and plus it's Boston. Right. Boston is not going to be happy with just one. You know, not, not with this team that's been knocking on this door like this. Yeah. But my thing is over the course of these next five years – if, 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 if let's say over the next three years, I'll, I'll put that type of. If in the next three years they don't win the championship, my problem with Jalen signing this contract is how hard it's going to be to move him. Yep. When they're like, okay, we got to make a change. Who's going to take sixty? You said sixty point seven year yeah. three. Yeah. Okay, so after that, after that, it gets 65 and almost 7. Who's going to swallow? We now we don't know what, you know, what 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 your operating budget is gonna be, what your cap's gonna be. We don't know that down there. I don't know if it's gonna be, you know, the market may shift in that direction. Mm-hmm. You know, the NBA may get to a global stage where you know the salary cap is increased so much that that's the norm. Right. Well, hell, Saudi Arabia may come in and like buy a whole thing, you know, <laughs> start a rival you know, NBA. Right, right. right. Yeah. So it's like, hey, hey, man, man, you know, <laughs> like Jalen Brown's a, a, a bargain right now. We don't know, but my thing is that because we've seen this so much before and lately, is how players' contracts, the back end of players' contracts, when they get these max deals or these max extensions, how the back end of them always get held up against them. Right. We've seen it. You know, we see it. Chris Paul got lucky because Golden State was like, all right, cool. But nobody in the league is going to want to pay Chris Paul $40 million. We saw Russell Westbrook going through these issues about the back end of his contract. We're seeing – we saw how Carmelo's like, nobody's like, nah, you know, we're not taking on his contract. The deal is good when you first sign it. But on the back end, it becomes problematic in how you can move and what the team is able to do because you're – it's held against you. It's almost like you become, a, you almost become like a running back in the NFL, but only in the NBA because of your contract. Mm. Yeah. You start to get cast out. So my thing with them is like, you know, unless you're really into restructuring, which is something the team is always going to do, you know, we, I, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to believe that at the end of this thing, Jalen Brown is going to get all three hundred and four million dollars of this. There will be some restructuring going on to to Rob's point about at some point we got to restructure this to make it happen so that we can get back in these conversations because it hasn't happened yet. Right. Now, if you're winning championships, everything's good. But if you're not, he's going to, I hate to say this, because the money's guaranteed. He's going to regret the structure of this contract because I believe that if they don't win, it's going to be held against him. Oh, the definitely held against him. And, he, and he's he gonna find hey, himself. He, he ain't gonna care. He got huh? sixty million reasons not to care. I know, but, but I think he's gonna want. But I think he's gonna want to play basketball. Yeah. You know, he's you don't gonna... want the whole. You don't want you know that. And even though he'll probably what is he twenty five, twenty six now, so he won't be on the back end. Mm-hmm. But you know, you, you don't want those situations where, you know, you you're not able to play basketball because your money's being held against you. Or you're not even play basketball in a winning situation because the only teams that's going to take you are the ones at the bottom of the bill. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, man. Hey, Jalen Brown, shout out to you, though, my dog. Yeah, dude. Hey, get I'm your happy bag, you. man. <laughs> dude, get your bag. I'm, no, one, no one's yeah. mad at him for it. But hey, I don't want to lose sight of the Michael business Finley. side of the game because we look at the bag, but we don't look at what the bag is going to mean on the back end of that contract yeah. and how if we look at recent history – Similar situations with less money coming back uh, to be to, to be held against the player. I can't remember. You know, but back in like what two thousand maybe what four or uh, uh, five. What was it that the NBA did where they could cut the player 
whoever they wanted, and they could use half their money. What was it? I forget what it was. Oh called. yeah, I forget the uh, yeah. Uh, um um ah. Because I remember they did the Michael Finley. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah they did yeah, Michael yeah, yeah. Finley like that, hmm. and Michael signed with us for the Spurs, and Michael's getting two contracts and was like the highest paid player in the NBA at one point of one year. I forget what it's called, but maybe the NBA. Be, I don't know if we going because we always talking about you know expanding the NBA. So when that and that's what happened when you expand. You add another teams and okay, we like what can we do to make these other teams better? And situations like that might come up. So you know, there's always like you said, there's so many things that can happen with you know, with, especially now with the NBA and the social media and the way they're trying to expand on the smartphones and the smart devices to do different ways to make the league bigger and better. So it's gonna be a way. So I'm not. Yeah, I, but the only problem contract, with that, Rob, is they just signed the collective bargaining agreement, so no change is gonna happen unless until that thing expires, right? Yeah. Hey, they can always amend it. <laughs> if, it's, if it's gonna be a way where the guys can make more money down the line, they'll amend it. Then that would yeah. well, yeah, but that would have to be something I think the players union would have to push against. And I don't know. I don't, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a good one. Yeah, yeah that's that's a good yeah. I, I I can't see the players union amending that because the one thing the way this collective bargaining agreement agreement came into play where there was no rufflings. No real pushback from ownership, no real public problematic negotiations. It kind of got done seamlessly. I think they're going to keep that up to a certain degree. So I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. But, you know, with the collective bargaining agreement set the way it is and as comfortable as everybody seems to uh, <laughs> parlay that it is, it's going to be interesting to see if they have some type of pushback and try to amend the way contracts, the way, at least the back end of contracts when players sign to not be held against them in a way where it becomes almost impossibility for them to even play or play in places that don't put them, you know, in basketball dungeons, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, by the way, we had a little bit of a, not to change gears, but one of the scarier stories that popped up today was Bronny. What happened with Bronny? Yeah. So, uh, we I just caught news of this this morning when we got in here and started setting up for the show is that Bronny had a uh, cardiac arrest. cardiac arrest and was rushed over to the hospital. He went through a brief stint in ICU. He's in stable condition now, but 18 years old, man, that's yeah, that's what's scary, dude. That's yeah. terrifying. Reminds you of uh, what happened with with Sharif. Yeah, you Sharif O'Neal. We did that when we were with Shaq. Sharif yeah. went through the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we just, you know, have to just, you know, nobody knows what's going on. And uh, just, I know they're going to keep it very hush hush. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be more hush hush than the stuff that happened with Jamie Foxx. But, you know, we just hope he's exactly. healthy. He can get back to being, getting to his career and being able to play, you know, living life, not playing basketball, living life at a, at a, yeah. a healthy rate. Yeah. I agree. And, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, he has the right people around him and um, the media respects LeBron enough to honor him with whatever privacy that they have. Cause you know, y'all all know, you know, um, the media plays a large role in how they decide not to attack information uh, that is of a sensitive nature to the subject matter mm -hmm. that they feel the public wants to know about. And if the media doesn't respect you, you know, you could put out all the statements they want and then they're not gonna respect the privacy that, you know, a lot of times that should be afforded to everybody, but it's not. But in this particular case, I think the media respects LeBron enough that they will get the privacy almost to like, you know, like you said, Rob, the Jamie Foxx degree mm -hmm. where they're like, hey, we'll respect whatever you all do. Um, and and hopefully he can get it right. I think the biggest problem they're going to have maybe is making sure that Bronny mentally is able to cape with having basketball take a back seat in his life at this young age for the first time in his life. Right. You know, uh, for an 18-year-old that has made basketball, you know, his life, his passion, um, having this type of setback, you know, is, is probably going to play a role on his mind. You know, so they, they have to rally around him to keep his mind stable, keep his mind focused on, yeah, you know, we're not saying basketball is not – important in your life right now but let's put this into proper perspective let's get through stage one and then work our way back to basketball being important and 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 and, and that's gonna take work 
You know, that, yeah. that's that's going to take work, especially with the family. So hopefully they're able to get through that stage and, you know, uh, have a long it is, six months, a year, two years, whatever, that he's able to not, that he's mentally able to deal with what he has to deal with, with basketball, taking a back seat to more important things health-wise in his life. Yeah. And, you know, getting back to bringing basketball in his life so that it still plays whatever role it's going to play in his future. Yeah. That's facts. To his, to his credit, I think him and um, Sharif are pretty tight. Uh, Sharif O'Neal yeah. and Bronny are pretty mm-hmm. tight. So, you know, Sharif, we watched when we were working with Shaquille, we, we watched Sharif go through this. And to his credit, Sharif did exactly that. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he put everything backseat. He was concerned with his health first, and he got healthy. And he even said a lot of times on social, he's like, I'll get back to basketball when I'm ready to get back to basketball. So yeah. I'm hoping that having a friend like that who's been through something at the same age, a yeah. very similar situation, who did exactly what you're talking about, maybe that will kind of help him get his arms around this thing a little bit, you know? Yeah, but I think I'm not disagreeing. I think, though, there's a little bit of difference because of the pressure that's been on Bronny. That's true. And the spotlight he's been under. That's true. That I, and I'm not saying basketball means more to him, but I think he probably, at 18 years old, saw a different basketball future than Sharif did, yeah. if that makes any sense. It does. Right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially when you when and, and this is nothing against LeBron, but especially when you when you know, and that's an added pressure, that my father has it in his mind that he wants to play with me. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm going to do whatever I can to make my father's dream come true because my father's done everything to me to make my dreams come true. Yep. True. So there's an extra added dimension here with Bronny that I think – you know, um, that's not that wasn't attached to Sharif, but I think I hope he's able to, you know, put that also in another compartment yeah. and really focus on whatever Sharif has to offer him to help him walk through this yeah. right. and find the similarities in their situations as opposed to the differences. Yeah, no. agreed. Yeah, but I mean, definitely thoughts and prayers with uh, LeBron, Thanks. the family, and Bronny as well. Chris. Just you know, of course, just thinking about him and hoping he gets better. Um, a couple more things I wanted to hit. We're going to give out Big Shot of the Week. By the way, Scoop, how, how much time do you spend down here in the South, man? Uh, it depends on what part of the South it is. You know, the South, you know, I I, I put it this way. I try to spend as much time down <laughs> South as possible. What about uh, Atlanta? Uh, as little of Atlanta as possible. <laughs> I'm starting to... Oh, all right. All right. Man, I'm and look, start, look. I'm starting look, to lose faith look. in this week's game, no, man. No, 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 no. I look. I will go to Mississippi. I will Why? go to Birmingham. Why? I would go... I, I would look. And I know that I would go all of... Atlanta is one big-ass magic city. I'm trying to stay out of the magic city. <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, all right. Well, look, Rob is we're in Atlanta. Uh, Rob is from the Dirty South. We play a game. We play a game on this show called Walmart or Waffle House. So if you want to stick around, I'm going to give you a batshit crazy story. You just have to tell me, did it happen at a Walmart or did it happen at a Waffle House? So uh, that's where that's where any time you spend in the South benefits you greatly. I, look, look, I, 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 you know, hey, hey, I got all type of family like down there. Like I said, down South is the only place in America where we as black folks can reach down and touch the dirt and touch our history. It's true. That's true. So true. that's why I try to spend as much time down there and take my kids down there just to go down there to touch the dirt. Mm, I like it. And, yeah, because it's, it's it's special. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. uh, but, his, but my problem is that my people down south that I always come to see, they ain't Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Or Waffle House people. Oh, come on. Go, now? They, they, no, no. They real mom and pop corner store. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got you. I, I got, got you. you. Yeah. Hey, yeah. hey. Luke, you still got you still got to go to uh, a Waffle House and get those eggs, man. And oh. get that. No, nah, man. They go. Man, look, man. We 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 eating we eating eggs at Lula Mays. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh let's do big shot of the week, uh, and then we'll play our game. We do big shot of the week every week. We find a story that we love. We just share it with everybody to. Let everyone know there still are decent people in the world, and the world's not a, a big fat pile of crap like it seems to be sometimes. Uh, our big shot of the week goes to an Indiana construction worker named Jason Haney. Uh, Jason created a life-size cutout of Where's Waldo? Uh, you know, the white man in the striped hat. And he put him <laughs> in a construction site across from a children's hospital. 
and he hides them every day. And the kids in the children's hospital basically get to look out the window every morning and see if they can't find the Waldo. And then when they do, word gets back to the construction site that they found him. Dude goes back to the site and moves him again. So just like little things like that to make a kid who's in the hospital's day a little bit brighter, a little bit better, and a little more fun. Uh, Shout out to Jason Haney for just doing a cool thing for kids. So man, that's, that's a, like an everyday eat yeah. egg hunt for the kids, right? Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much. Yeah, pretty much. Man. Yeah, I like that's that. Dope. That's dope. That's so, dope. I like it too. Big, big shot. I, of the I love that, man. To Jason yeah, Haney. About how, you know, how, the kids, you know, you, you, when you're in a hospital, you know, and you're sick, and you, it's the small things like this that you look forward to the next day that can get you through it. For those kids that yeah. made it, go look out the window and, and find Waldo. It's, it's great, man. And, you know, we probably sit by like, it's the, it's the simple things, man, in life sometimes yeah. that mean so much. Exactly. Yeah. And like you said, Rob, sometimes it's just a little thing to get you through the day. That's all you yeah. need. It's just that one little thing. But All right, let's let's uh, let's see how we do with this, the Dirty South here. Walmart or Waffle House. Uh, we'll, I have seven stories. Again, game, game <laughs> simple. You just tell me, did this bad shit crazy story happen at a Walmart or did it happen at a Waffle House? And here in the South, it could be either one. Uh, cops were called to this location after employees spotted a couple having sex in the dumpster. Not next to the dumpster. In the freaking dumpster. They were, of Waffle course, House. arrested. <laughs> Scoops going straight to Waffle House. Waffle House. <laughs> having a Walmart and having a Waffle House. Scoop says, Waffle House Scoop all says day. Waffle House. Yeah, I'm going to say Waffle House, too. That's some crazy. That's, that only can happen at a Waffle House. You know what? Due to the fact that I've never seen a dumpster outside of a Waffle House, I'm going to go to Walmart because, you know, you think about how many boxes you have to break down and you go to the dumpster more often. So I'm going Walmart on this one. Oh, man. The point goes to a seven-time NBA champion, oh, wow. Robert Ory. Oh, yeah, man. no, it was uh, very much. It was a Walmart. Good job, Rob. Take home the eighth title. Have you ever seen a dumpster outside of a Waffle House? It's I've there. It's got to be there somewhere. Yeah, it got to be there. They got to dump the garbage. I thought the smell would attract them back there. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, you, know, you, you get wrapped up in some syrup and some waffles. Right, 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 right. The moment catches you right, you just go with it. Right, uh, right. All right, story number two. Uh, charges were filed against a man at this location. For soliciting sex from a female employee, the woman had purple hair, and she was told by an older man, you look like one of them sex worker girls, I'll give you 50 bucks for a BJ. He was arrested, of course, because that is a terrible freaking story, but did the old man who's, who uh, harassed uh, uh, the woman with purple hair happen at a Walmart or a Waffle House? Did the girl have teeth? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Lord. not in the story. But either way, I'm gonna say no. That would determine where she's at. <laughs> but baby, I've never seen anybody working in a Walmart that has colored hair. So I'm gonna have to say this has to be a Waffle House. Okay. Hmm. Have you seen somebody at the Waffle House working with colored hair? <laughs> yes, I have. Okay. I just in South Carolina, and so yes, I have. <laughs> I'm gonna go Waffle House too. Okay. What do you think, I'm going to go Waffle House 3. All right. And all of you get the point. Yeah, that was a Waffle House. Good job. Yeah. Uh, all right. Story number three. Uh, police were not called on an elderly 78-year-old man at this location after, again, with the old freaking creepy men, approached a 19-year-old girl and commented about how beautiful she was. But he followed up by telling her she better not be letting those little boys have sex with her because older men are much better. Uh, he was not arrested, but he was banned from banned from the location. So did is it there, happen? Is there a theme? Is there a theme? I, I, it's, it seems like it. It seems like it. Uh, did it happen at Walmart or a Waffle House? Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> Walmart. Man, across the board again, and y'all got it right. Yeah, Walmart. Yeah, that's a Walmart. Creepy old men in a Walmart, man. Uh, all right, we'll go story number four. A fight with an employee isn't strange at either location, but it is strange when an angry customer pulls out Chinese throwing stars <laughs> and starts flinging them around <laughs> at employees and customers. He was, of course, arrested. So did the man who got into a fight with an employee and then broke out the Chinese throwing stars, a uh, Walmart or a Waffle House? Do they carry Chinese throwing stars Start, you know, at Walmart. At Walmart. They carry them. Uh, it's hard to imagine they don't carry much things at Walmart. Right, so that's I, what I'm going to say. Maybe. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm, I might be leaning towards Walmart because he they were already in store. I like so that. He just took them off the shelf, or opened he, it up. Or he already had them on them. everybody. 
Well, I mean, it, he goes, or he already had him on him. Because you know, right, I'm oh, going but, out but for the he, day. Do I have my Chinese thing, throwing but, stars? If, okay, good. If he walked into a Waffle House with, with that, no, did you get a report of what he was arrested? What were the charges? Uh, I, I don't know. He was just arrested. Uh, no, because, assault with a deadly weapon, I would imagine. <laughs> but his thing, if you come into a, a Waffle Mart with that, you have intent. Oh. If you just find him in a Walmart, that's different. Oh. All right. Hey, this is ha this happened at a Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Waffle Rob House, too. Knows. I'm 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 gonna go Waffle House. All right, well, you're all gonna get a point. Yeah, it was a Waffle House, but Scoop made a compelling argument for Walmart. I give him credit though, man. Hey, yeah. I've been to, I go to Walmart a lot, and I've never seen throwing stars in a Walmart. So <laughs> it's hard to believe though, because Walmart sells pretty much every kind of uh, weaponry you can freaking imagine. Right, exactly. All right, uh, a couple more quick ones, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, at very least, the man in this story tried to do the right thing up front. He told an employee he could not pay. But instead, he offered to trade the stuff in his trunk in exchange. The stuff in his trunk consisted of an old pair of dirty boots, some broken children's toys, and a SpongeBob bathing suit still wet. <laughs> so, did this man try to barter all that crap for uh, a Walmart or Waffle House purchase? Walmart. Waffle House. Waffle House. Waffle House. Walmart. Oh, Waffle House. Rob's he, convinced it's a Waffle House. Everybody else yeah. goes Walmart. I'm going Walmart. Uh, this happened outside of a... Waffle House. Wow. Very good. He tried to You got there's no there's nobody now. It's all computer generated. You walk you, you scan oh, it, you pay for yourself now at Walmart. Yeah, hey, you can barter at Waffle House. Like you can hey, barter man, down. I'm, I'm perfect right now. I'm quitting right now. Quitting you are, right now. Now. You I didn't think you got one wrong. I got two more. Do you want to just call it? I mean, geez. No. Uh, all right, let's finish out. Uh let's take wait, a wait, quick... wait. Rob, you are the Paul Pierce. Of <laughs> Dwayne Wade will take exception with that. He will take exception with that. I promise you. Hey, hey, hey my nickname was Dirty, Dirty, Dirty South. So I'm like, I like that a little bit. Uh, all right, let's take a quick look around, and we're gonna find a woman in a low top, a low cut top, booty shorts with the word "juicy" plastered across the bottom, and layers of caked on makeup to try and woo the men folk. The only problem, she was 82 years old. That's so, low-cut top, juicy booty <laughs> shorts, 82-year-old <laughs> woman at a Walmart or a Waffle House. Walmart. Walmart. Yeah, Walmart. Go yeah that's Mark. a people of Walmart story if I ever heard one. You're yes. absolutely correct. <laughs> yes, that is, a, that is a people of Walmart. All right, last one, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, let's say hello to a nickname, a man nicknamed Santa Pimp. <laughs> During the winter, he's a regular Santa Claus, but in the summer, he rolls in with red shorts a white t-shirt, red suspenders, still full Santa character, but a bright red brim pimp hat with a big white feather in it. And they call him Santa Pimp, and he eats it up. So what is Santa- What type of car is he driving? <laughs> Cadillac. Uh, some kind of cutlass, South. maybe? Cadillac. I don't know, yeah. Uh, but is Santa Pimp rolling up in the Walmart or the Waffle House? Well, here's a case, and Rob would have the answer to this. Where do you do your best parking lot pimping? In the Walmart. Oh, that's in a, a good Walmart, point. In the Waffle House. Almost. Uh, I don't hey, know. I'm gonna I'm go a, Waffle I'm a, House. I'm gonna plead the fifth on this one so I can end perfect. Oh, get <laughs> no, out of here! I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Walmart. I'm gonna say a Walmart. <laughs> Scoop. Mm. I'm overthinking it because I'm thinking about what cars he drives. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, where do you get, you know, um, man, I ain't trying to be plead the fifth like Rob. I ain't, I, I ain't going out like that. So I'm, I'm going Walmart. You going Walmart? I'm going Walmart. Yeah. I'm sticking. I'm sticking with you because you've been you've been kind of exact <laughs> on whole things. I, I'm riding. I'm riding with whatever he says. And Rob is officially shooting. Six for seven. No, it was a Waffle House. Oh. It was a Waffle House. Yeah, yeah. You, you missed that last one at the buzzer. Sorry, but no. sorry, Rob. Sorry, Rob. I know you don't usually miss those, but yeah. How do you miss the last one? I know, hey, right? How right? do you miss hey, the last hey, one? Hey, hey, last time that happened, it cost me $10 million, so. <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? Uh, but you know, what? I, I missed that. When I went awful, I was, what, three for like 40 playing for the Lakers my last year, and I missed that shot in San Antonio at the buzzer. Oh wow! And that cost you. San Antonio wasn't late. Like, San Antonio's like, nah, man, we got rings because he, you ain't getting us back like that. <laughs> and, then, and then we lost. We went home and lose to the San Antonio Spurs, and then 
I got traded. Then, well, I got let go that summer. Yep. Because I had awful. So. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, Game that center. was a disappointing way to end the show. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm telling. Tell, you tell us how you really out. feel. Tell us how yeah, you really feel really about that. No, it don't bother. <laughs> hey, hey, it don't bother me because you know I went on to win two more chips after that, so it don't bother me. It, you know, <laughs> I got rings to show for it. Hey, man, mm-hmm. Scoop, we appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much yeah. for the time, oh, no, man. I we, thank you, thank Scoop. We yeah. love you. Can, uh, can I ask one question before we go? Do it. Do it. Yes, sir. Rob, let me ask you this. The big shot, Rob. Yeah. Why, why, why is the Rob on the back? Why, why can't we just call it? Cause I've been calling you just Big Shot. Why, why just not just Big Shot? It just, you know, it's it's funny you say that because I say just said Big Shot because people yeah. say Rob, Bob, and it all started when my mom didn't like the name Bob because they called my dad Bob. She wanted me to be different, and I just was as a joke said Rob, and all of a sudden it just became Big Shot Rob, and it's like just call me Big Shot, you know? So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why would just Big Shot? I know Chauncey's like. Well, Chauncey, Chauncey can be Mr. Big Shot, and you just Big Shot, right? Well, there's, there's no Mr. Big Shot when Chauncey, because he came way after me. So you just can't repeat someone's nickname. That's like saying, okay, I'm going to be Air Bud or Air Joy. It's only one Air. There's only one Air, right? <laughs> and uh, There's only one human highlight. There's only one magic, so you cannot repeat tell another what you name. Tell him what you call Chauncey. The fake Mr. Big Shot? <laughs> <laughs> the, the fake Big Shot? He calls him the fake Big Shot. <laughs> fake Big Shot. Oh, I love Chauncey, though. Chauncey's cool. You know, but nah, now, now like, technically, it's only one Big we had, shot. technically, we had Doc Gooden and Doc Rivers. We both came at the Doc J, right? Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but you did like. Well, we can call him Fake part, Doc. <laughs> yeah, we can call him Fake Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm sure Doc Rivers would really appreciate. You just can't, you just can't throw Mister on the front of Big Shot. I'm like, oh, it's different. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right.